Hey, chipmunk. <laughs> He's used to being fed, I think. Oh my gosh. Hi, little one. Oh my goodness. Are you kidding? <gasps> Darling. It's the morning chipmunk, and he has a friend behind him. Darling. He's so cute. Chocolate chip blondie. Let's try it out. Now the French toast looks amazing. The bagel sandwich proved itself to be awesome. And the pancakes, this time they have bananas in them. Yeah. Are they going to be as good with bananas? Yeah, that's why I ordered them. Ooh. This is so much French toast. This looks really good. <laughs> strawberries, you still miss strawberries? <laughs> best French toast I've ever had too. This is very amazing. Totally worth the wait if it's a busy day and they're making lots and lots of these orders. This is fantastic. I have never had French toast that was either this big or this delicious. See, these people know what to do with feathers. I'm being introduced to the sports paraphernalia and I've never seen half of this stuff in my life so this is kind of interesting. For pets, it's so cute. You can dress up your little dog to be like a wolverine. It's so cute. Even the little golf balls. I don't know why this amuses me so much but I don't think I've ever seen golf balls at University of like Texas in Austin, at University of Missouri, University of Missouri in Kansas City. All the places I've been I've never seen so much paraphernalia for a school. We even have super fancy jewelry and watches. And I'm looking at some of this and I'm like, I could make that. And it's like $120 for these things. But I could probably make some. Even though I might not be going here, I might complete my degrees here at University of Michigan after we have in-state tuition. But even if I don't end up going here myself, this is gonna be the place that my wonderful Chips is going to get his doctorate from, and that means it is going to take care of both of us for the rest of our lives, so I am already getting pretty loyal to all the M's surrounding me. There's even Santa Claus. Why am I so surprised? It's really kind of funny. And also reminds me just how quickly you can end up with so much clutter. Even your Michigan fly swatter. Game day, is that what it says? Yeah. Game day vinaigrette mix doesn't mention anything else. It's pasta. Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. Chipmunks and squirrels absolutely everywhere. They don't care. We're standing like just a few feet away from them. They're content as can be. Oh, I can hear them nibbling from here. You can hear them nibbling on the little seeds. This is so much fun. There are so many weddings. I think we just walked past another wedding at a church. Then there's a bridal shower, and then there's a wedding, and there was a wedding last night, and there was another wedding at the art center last night. There's so many weddings. There's more weddings. Weddings everywhere. I've seen more bridal dresses scooting about here in this weekend than I have in a very, very long time. So apparently Ann Arbor in May is like the time to get married, I suppose. Cool. Truth conquers by itself. That's science motto. This is an example of something a lot of people don't think about is snakes and dinosaurs at the same time. And this is actually a model built off of a fossil found in Western India 67 million years ago. And what they did is they took the fossil and they gave it to this paleo artist right here, Tyler Kirlian, who Kirlior, who was commissioned to take the fossil right here as it was captured when the snake and the dinosaur in the nest uh, got covered by a mud mudslide and to make a life-size replica for it. And this is the result. So this is really fun because these are two animals that a lot of people don't think of as having been at the together at the same time but they were and that really is trippy to me because I'm not much into prehistoric life I don't research it very much so it even seems like this very much surprised me so I love seeing this and then this is the name of the snake so Sanaje indicus and the ancient gape 
in Sanskrit is where its name came from. And then if you look at how big it is, it was about 11 feet long and a nestling dinosaur would be nothing for it. But they show that the mouth of the ancient snakes didn't open as much as those of modern snakes who can unhinge their jaw to swallow larger prey. So cool. I love how many of these things uh, show show the evolutionary timeline as these creatures then turn into the elephants that we know today. That is so much fun. And you can see their teeth. Their teeth are very similar to the teeth that you can see on some of them. Like here's the mastodon. And then here is a mammoth molar. And the elephant teeth I've seen, they kind of look like this. So that's really cool. They're a little smaller in my memory, but it might have just been the one I saw. We're looking at ancient turtles here, and this is really interesting because I'm looking at this one. How would you pronounce that one, my love? Meolania? Maybe? Sure. Sure! But look, it has like horns on its head, and that's so interesting. And then you have like these little tiny ones, and these ones are from way far long ago. And then you've got your modern sea turtle over here. I'm used to this kind of turtle skull, and then you look at this guy, and it's just so cool. This is so cute! So they think this is one of the ancestors of all turtles and this is a life-size model and it could fit in the palm of my hand. So from this little guy, if you follow the tree, it'll show you how the evolutionary lines eventually go all the way to the next case where you have the modern sea turtle. But I had no idea that he might have been descended by this tiny little thing that is so adorable! The terror of the Triassic swamps. So this skull came from an animal that was nearly 20 feet in length. Very long jaw. That's what you'll normally see on like the caiman who focus on mostly eating fish. Very cool. So here is a moa specimen. First time I've ever seen one in person. It looks like for the most part it's the, yeah, you can see the cartilage. So for the most part it looks like it's a authentic specimen and not mostly like model and plaster. But that's so cool. They're a little bit smaller than I thought. I think I always thought Moa were much bigger, but it could just be the age of the specimen too. Very neat. So here is a fossil version of a huge... I had no idea that the Edmontosauruses were so big, but it's gigantic and it's really, really cool looking because it's so long. It's just amazing. The sheer size of these guys is not something that really got to me, but they're recognized as the duck-billed dinosaurs. And what's really fun is back here, they actually have a mural that they painted a very, very long time ago of what life they used to think was like back then. And then, if you are really into prehistoric life, you can see a lot of errors with this. So then if you come down and look over here, they've revised the mural to show more updated, accurate scientific information. For example, how the dinosaur's look has changed significantly. The posture between the T-Rex then and now has changed. You can see they've gotten rid of all of the grass. So they've removed the grass, they've removed the cattails because they have no idea when the cattails showed up. They've moved around uh, like the Ankylosaurus is no longer dragging its tail because it'll come and tell you that nowhere have they looked in fossil evidence and seen tails dragging for the Ankylosaurus. So they picked up the Ankylosaurus's tail and they revised the whole mural, which is very, very cool to me because it shows how even prehistoric science is a constantly changing field. Oh yeah, look at this guy. Very, very, very cool. They're a lot smaller than I thought, actually. They kind of look like uh, something you would want as your guard dog. All right, check this out. It is a Deinonychus specimen, and that is the terrible claw raptor. And look down here. There it is. It's a little bit smaller than I thought, but again, it could be like the age of the specimen as well. But that is just so much fun. So here he is, and 
this will show where they have been found in historic, like, North America, which is very interesting. And no, they're not a true raptor. So, let's see. They sometimes refer to these guys as raptors because they were active hunters with large claws. It is not a bird of prey, so they belong to their own group of dinosaurs. Very interesting. So we're going to have to come back when we live here and check this guy out quite a bit more because I know a lot of you really, really love the terrible claw. So here is Basil, who we've seen several times in our dinosaur-related series. And it's really interesting because I have heard peripherally of the place called the Valley of the Wells, but I've never really read up much about it. But that just sounds so amazing. I'm going to go home and I'm going to try to research a bit more of the Valley of the Wells and see if we can pop it up in some of our series. Because hundreds of specimens of these guys found in the desert, that's just so cool. I really want to learn more about them now. He's so cute. He's so tiny. He's so tiny. Do they live here? I want to see them. Um, I've never seen these before. This is Michigan Wildlife. <gasps> I want to see one. Ow. Look at that bobcat. It reminds me of the one at the North Carolina Zoo, yeah? But then why is he your school mascot if wolverines aren't in Michigan? Does it say why? The Wolverine has been the mascot in the early days of the university. Some people refer to Michigan as the Wolverine State. No one knows for sure where this nickname came from. Huh. Interesting. So what are you doing here? This is my favorite from North Carolina, the Carolina Wren that I'm always talking about and that I like to say if I was a bird I'd probably be a Carolina Wren. Well he's got some Winter Wren, Marsh Wren, and they get smaller as they go up, uh, Sand Wren, and house wren cousins that apparently we might find around here so I'm pretty excited about that. Michigan, the white pine, state tree, state flower is the apple blossom, state bird is the American robin which is very interesting because that's a super common one. The um, state soil is some sand, very distinctive sandy layers, very interesting. The state wildflower is the dwarf lake iris. State reptile is the painted turtle. State game mammal, white-tailed deer. Fossil, American mastodon. Uh, gem is the greenstone. I have the world greenstone. That's actually very pretty. Then the state stone. <laughs> I didn't know there were state stones. Oh my goodness. And that, that one's actually coral, like fossilized coral, which is pretty cool. And the state fish, the brook trout. So now I know my uh, state creatures. Oh yeah, and then it's like, where's the wolverine? It's the wolverine state, but they're not native. They are so cute. So they breed around here, or in Michigan. So we might keep an eye out for those guys. Very cute. of Japan. If I really started focusing again, I bet I could do a lot of good research and pick up, or at least polish off my very, very basic Japanese and maybe even make some progress with it. This is so cool. Where we were was just the new arrivals, and these are the stacks and stacks and stacks. The Asian library stacks just for all of the literature from Asia. How big is this library ranked for? It's the biggest between the coasts. Wow. So this is the biggest Asian library resource between the two coasts. And I think, wow, it just goes on forever.
This is the storage gallery, I think, for things they want to display, but they don't really have a proper spot for. And this is so cool. Chips and I are both like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. And I think they have these computers that will maybe tell you like what you're looking at. Yeah, he's nodding, so maybe tell you what you'd look at. This is so cool, because you look at all of these pieces. Some of them are kind of wonky. Why is there Elmer's glue over here? I have no idea. But then you come over here, and there's really, really gorgeous pieces. Like, look at that wood piece. I wish I could have something like that for my birds as a bird nest. And it's just gorgeous. Look at the gecko. Oh my goodness, this is so cool. Beautiful wood pieces. And there's just all of these different styles and designs. Look at the delicate style over there. And then these colors. This is neat. And then you get in just, it's such, just a random collection of little things. Oh, I love this kind of stuff. Wow, I love this kind of stuff. Look, there's even a little crab up there. It's so pretty. And then there's just like inkwells. These are in, in a collection of inkwells throughout the ages. This is so fun. Wrong, but uh, this stuff, I, I'd bet you anything that's Tang Dynasty. Mm -hmm. That's 600s to early 900s. And then are the chests, those don't look like they open, so are they just supposed to represent wealth? It's like, supposed to represent a, ch a chest of something. Okay, stuff. and then you would leave that um, in the tomb. In the tombs, mm -hmm. and then same with like this, where it would be like, here's mm -hmm. some food for the afterlife. Mm -hmm. first dog in the paintings and it's surprising because there were so many in all of the Nelson Adkin paintings but then we also notice there's an oriental shelf behind this woman and this is dated back in uh, 1878 is when this was made oh and this is actually an oriental door too wow second spotting of a puppy dog in a very 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 beautiful painting this is very nice so this is called The Highlander's Home, Sunshine in the Cottage by John Philip, and it was painted in 1855. me is this is dangerous right here this is just the salad this is beautiful <laughs> 